So welcome to the third masterclass today afternoon. Um, I'm very happy to work with our third student. Rudolf is today with me and I'm very glad to uh, talk about some Bach uh, with you and uh, play some music and see what we find out, talk about some details. Um, I heard you are uh, playing partita number three, right? Today. Yes. Okay. Would you mm -hmm. like to start from, you play Lour and Gavotte, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Then let's go for it. Very nice, thank you. Let's work on it from the beginning. And let's start from, um, actually I wanted to ask you also the same question as I asked also Ariana before, who also um, uh, played uh, Lur today. Um, did you ever see Lur as a dance, like being danced by the dancers? No. Have you ever watched some video? No. So I was also curious at some point when I played this partita because you know, I knew it's some kind of dance, French dance, but I couldn't really picture it in my head because um, it seems like a very slow movement, like slow music, and uh, we play it as a melody somehow, and I couldn't really imagine the steps that would be done. Um, and I uh, googled it, I went on YouTube, and uh, it um, turns out that it's actually quite jumpy and quite rough dance that it's, uh, it's much faster normally than what Bach wrote for us or how we traditionally play it and it has quite um, strong dotted rhythm which is very well articulated so important is, is this uh, upbeat ta -dam, pam, ta -dam, pam, because the dancers are actually jumping and then falling down on the ground and you can also hear the fall so it's it's quite vertical when you watch it uh, on the video. Uh, of course, we, we don't have to play that way and we don't have to play that fast also because it's just music that is written to play on the stage. It's not the practical dance for, for dancers. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to inspire ourselves by this original rhythm and uh, by this motif that is very characteristic. So the first upbeat that we have written here as a just eight and quarter note, it doesn't have to be played in this exact metric. It can be a little bit more dotted, a little bit more flexible. So why don't you try the same tempo, in a slow tempo, to take the, uh, this rhythm a little bit uh, in the direction of dotted rhythm. So... Yeah? 
Padam, yeah. tam. So kind of slow motion of the original look. Okay, very good, much better. Then also when it comes back in... It's fine if you connect it on the same bow, but it still has to be articulated. It can't be legato, like a real legato. Yeah? Yeah. And I like the lightness in between, also in between of uh, like after the quarter note. Um... A little bit of air in between. Okay. One more from the beginning. Exactly. And when the actual 16 is written in bar 4, then play it even shorter, yeah, even later. So... Yeah, really, really uh, dotted. Um, try just this, this place directly. Yeah, much better. And now we go on one, uh, go once more from the beginning. And I would like to ask you just as an experiment to play once without any vibrato. I'm also, I'm not that orthodox in in this Baroque playing without completely without vibrato. I really let myself sometimes use it for expression because we also use the modern instruments and modern bow. So it's okay to still use a little bit of it, but not automatically on every note as we are used to do in romantic or classical pieces, yeah? Try mm -hmm. once, just really very, very pure sound, very clean. It will also let you establish the intonation, search for this intonation. You can also correct yourself. We are not in the concerts now. And uh, then later we can try the same phrase once more and add a little bit of the of the seasoning, yeah, of the spices, but just where you decide to, not automatically everywhere. Yeah, okay. Wait. Yeah, I without, without, it. yeah, it's a habit, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it that way. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. So really, if you need to, just add it maybe in two or three places. But like this, it sounds so fantastic. And when I imagine you would be in the boomy acoustic of a church or some museum or whatever, whatever big hall with long acoustic where the notes stay in the air, it's much better when the note is really on a certain level and without this, you know, without different overtones because yeah. then the picture is clear and the chords are really clear. So I found it really, really tasteful, beautiful. Um, if you have some problems with intonation, I know the queens are like, you know, fifths are the, the most difficult uh, intervals for us. You know, how, to, how do you normally uh, search for them? Do you just use the, the finger? I kind of swivel around. Um, uh, yeah? I kind of experiment exactly. with how much weight I put on each string um, with also. one finger. So, exactly, that's know. a good one also with balance, yeah? 
but also how much tension you put on which string with bow, right? But um, what is very helpful is when you start searching actually with your elbow. Start from your elbow, like check where your elbow has to be when you are like... I am... Oh, it's here, yeah? If I'm too far there or there, it's, it's not really gonna be exactly in point. And then at some point you learn this uh, position, yeah? But try to tune it using your elbow position. Elbow has to be flexible. Don't, don't yeah. stay in the, same, in the same position. Try maybe just slowly this place where it's a little bit tricky with intonation. So... Uh, uh, it's the bar six. Yeah. Just slowly, without uh, tempo. Yeah? Yeah. Exactly. You see? Yeah? It's yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah, once uh, more? Pardon? What, once more and then continue? Also yep. slow? And then we, we have just uh, the easy stuff. Great. Uh, that was one thing I wanted to tell. And then uh, in the bar eight, there is last quarter note. It's a pick up to, to bar nine. And you know, for me, it sounds like the beginning of the theme. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. Then I would, I would phrase it that way. I would go until, until the, uh, measure before, yeah, when we play, mm -hmm. and then try try to phrase that way. It's maybe it's not so obvious from when we are reading, but I think it makes sense. Yeah. Ta -ta -ta Good, exactly. Do you plan on making the repetition actually? The first part, the first. Do you don't, okay. Good. If in case you do repetition at some point, um, because it's such a short movement, it's it's really beautiful. Uh, then the second time I would add some ornaments, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you don't play with repetition, it's fine. So now let's, but let's repeat now once more. And I don't tell you to play completely without vibrato, you decide but really just in the places where you really feel it has to be like you know when when it's impossible to to leave the note just too too white with with the white color all right let's try let's try the important thing is that you just don't go with your habit of you know vibrating almost every note as you noticed at some point that oh no now mm -hmm. it's controlled i do what i want <laughs> <laughs> so let's try to play like this
Very good. As you notice now, there is a difference between the motif where we where we make the the eight notes a little bit shorter when it's tadam pam padam pam, and when it's just classical two eight notes. For example, uh, for example. Yeah, we don't make them unrhythmical there. But in the mm -hmm. beginning where you start after the double stop, um, both times, both times it has to be a little bit dotted. Ta-dam, okay. pam, ta-dam, pam. Mm -hmm. And try also not to vibrate too much. First part was amazing, really great. Mm -hmm. I like the taste and the sound is really, really nice you know and uh, try also the second part in the same way we will see when a little bit more uh, a more more dramatic uh, chords are coming of course you can you can add a little bit yeah mm -hmm. but let's let's like tr let's uh, start from from zero and then add Very good, very good. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting again. But now, uh, again, when you start from double bar, can you play it once more and listen to the bass line? Um, and then... Really, it could be played by the um, trio or quartet. It's, it's still... Uh, another voice that has a melody. So let's now listen only to that, not only to the soprano, and phrase according to that. It's going to help mm -hmm. with the phrasing. Do you notice what happens there? It's really interesting, yeah? Like, for example, the second phrase where, where, uh, where we actually stopped before. Mm. Yeah, very important this. The dissonance, yeah? Also, so... Uh, where this comes uh, play once more and really listen to the bass from bar uh, somewhere around 15 you can decide where yep. it's good to start yeah Also, the trill, I, I didn't want to interrupt, but you can enjoy it more uh, from starting from up, so... A little bit longer. Yeah, not... Yeah, I guess I feel Make pretty unsafe because it's a fourth finger that I'm uh, trilling. Oh yeah, I know, I know that. <laughs> I know how it feels, but take a risk now. We are not recording it for Deutsche Grammophon, so yeah. just try. <laughs>
let's try again from maybe from the place um, and this legato needs to be a little bit phrased yeah and also uh, you started vibrating again I think it's just you were focusing on something else and on the intonation mm -hmm. let's try also w without vibrato somewhere around bar oh you know what the pickup to bar 19 is very good place yeah. so yeah, yeah a little bit direction leading to the chord Yeah, much better. I like it really much better like this. So try practicing it that way. Always start from non vibrato and add a little bit on the top of what you find, you know, in the right hand, yeah, with your bow. Yeah. And um, very important to follow the bass line to decide about the phrasing, yeah, mm -hmm. because then you hear a harmony a little bit different. And uh, exactly, and be careful about the pickups. Sometimes the pickup is the beginning of the phrase. So typical Bach thing that it's not on the one, yeah. Yeah. But really nice, great. Um, then let's move on to gavotte. Yeah, sure.
very nice. Thank you. <coughs> we, I had a few interruptions uh, in between. I hope you can hear me well now. I don't know if the, oh, the yeah. network is... Yeah, good. And connection today is a little bit tricky because I heard there is a thunderstorm in Riga or has oh, been maybe. Right? Yeah, or in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> or maybe before, I don't know. Maybe the days before. Um, so let's start from the beginning. You know what is Gavot? It's a, it's a it's actually folk. Dance. Yeah, I did but check it's that online as well. Very good. I checked some steps for that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> can you dance Gavot now? <laughs> I actually can't. I, I tried to find a tutorial, but there was just a demonstration. I, I noticed that there was one step forward and with uh, these kinds of hand, hand motions, or something, I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, that's always helping because, you know, we have to actually inspire from the original dance, you know, from how actually it's been, uh, uh, how it's been uh, practiced and uh, what kind of gesture, because it helps us to know about the directions and about the phrasing. Very good. So, but Gavot, you know, Gavot and Menuet are very similar dances. The difference is that Menuet has been um, danced in the aristocratic uh, um, environment. So, like, on the on the palace or you know uh, at some prince party and um, uh, mm -hmm. and by the high society people while gavotte is actually a uh, more folkloristic and uh, danced by just normal simple people um, and i think it has also uh, an impact how we should play it because um, i think it has to be a little bit more on the ground like you know a little bit more simple and uh, Maybe a little bit rustic sometimes, so don't try to be too elegant in the in the main theme. Yeah, it doesn't have to be not too soft. Somehow you play very long on the string. I think you can easily go for a, for a lighter theme, and the theme is repeating every time. Yeah, after every variation because it's a rondo, but don't worry that it's similar or it's the same. It's, that's how rondo is written. So it's repetitive movement. It's written like that. Mm -hmm. We can vary more into every variation, but theme can just remain, um, you know, possible to recognize by the, by the, the listener. So. Um, <laughs> like that it doesn't have to be so fast I'm a bit fast because I'm I'm excited I'm talking also very fast um, but uh, find your tempo important that also variations are in the same tempo so uh, if you play faster than uh, it has to be then the same if you play a little bit slower the variations yeah Then also the theme has to be slower. Just find your okay. tempo, yeah, by the by the tempo of the eights later. Very nice. Uh, remember about the legato, yeah. Always enjoy uh, a bit more sound on the in the beginning of the legato in baroque. Yeah. Yep. Once more. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, they're just different uh, bones. I'm gonna try again. Very nice. And then also, you can take also a little bit of breath, yeah, in between. As you, as you like, just as a possibility. Mm -hmm. You don't have to also. Yeah, try once more. Okay, and one important thing also, because it's a dance and it has to be in a pulse, it has to stay in a pulse, don't rush on the eight, uh, on the eight notes. Uh, yeah, yep. 
I know you take a little bit of time on the legato, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to uh, make up for it after, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, really relax, play every note with with uh, peace also, like not, not don't rush too much. Dancers also need time to be able to dance out the figure, yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's work on the first variation then, yeah? I think uh, we see very often in the score how, it, how the shape of the phrase is going. So when it's high, when it's low, we can always follow it. It's actually already helping. So for example... For but then additionally to this, we have to know when uh, we have do uh, din uh, dominant and where is the tonic, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, which chord is more important, which is less important and relaxed. Um, try to think about it, yeah? So, for example... And then, that's the dissonance, yeah? We have to show... And then we have the relaxation. Uh, Try once more. To, to follow this line. Yeah, a little bit grow and then go, uh, go down again. Mm -hmm. And um, also I would like uh, to have the, the stable pulse, pulsation uh, in, the, in the eight notes everywhere actually. So don't rush on them, yeah? If they go forward it's somehow losing the 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 meaning you know so mm -hmm. just stay in the pulse and do music with different things than than the tempo with okay. sound with dynamics yeah articulation Here. Don't worry, we work on it first and then we go on. Um, um, exactly, the theme was good, it's the same. And so. And then, next variation. One thing is to follow the, the soprano, which is. Um, We have also the little uh, legato eight notes, yes. Yeah? So, and then later, um, 
I think you can play more with it. Just make it a little bit more playful. And uh, both both things are same important because it's polyphonic music. Yeah. So we can't really decide which uh, is more relevant. It's both um, as important. So. More, more phrasing on the legati and more, just more playful. Try it once okay. more. Let's experiment a little bit. Great, I liked it. I liked it a lot. And then when you finish the theme here, you can lead to the to the original theme. Yes. Yeah? So you don't have to close. You can actually open it and then land in the forte, as you want. It's it's optional. Yeah. Very nice. And here, really rustical. This. Uh, yeah. It's in a different uh, tonation than original. It has a little bit different color. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And here, oh, here actually it's a good idea to, to, to make crescendo. Yeah, you can decide either both or just one. Maybe here actually it, it fits even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just spontaneously thought, very good. Um, this, uh, this variation... It's very, it's different color, you know, so suddenly we are in a different place. It's not this... Um, uh, party of all the people in a village where everyone is dancing it's a little bit more um, more uh, meditative or you know a little bit more reflexive yeah mm -hmm. reflective and um, try to let's try to find a different color non vibrato and very pure and uh, and very um, you know a little bit in, in introvertic yeah mm -hmm. so <laughs> like you are actually telling some story about the past yeah it's mm. it's kind of your memories of the past and it's um, it's just really narrative so let's let's try once more find yeah. this mood For example, yeah, I know we have legato on every uh, beginning of the bar, but it doesn't have to be the same every time. So when you, of course, you phrase it, but sometimes a little bit different, yeah. a little bit with more uh, with this let's try out and if it's too much or bad we will repeat and we, we find something else yeah yeah but le let yourself just play as you mm -hmm. feel now Yeah, 
very good. I would put a little bit more tension, more intensive uh, um, sound in this uh, in this bar, yeah, with the yeah, with this okay. chord. And also here. Just be careful not to play glissando in, in the in between, yeah? yeah? Yeah, no glissando. Okay, let's try once more. It was great. Good, uh, good direction. You can do a little bit more in this direction. Yeah. Exactly. I just think this is the dissonant tag uh, bar, and this is already a bit relaxed. So I so actually the opposite word of what you of what you propose. Yeah, maybe like yeah. this. Okay. Let's try once more. Maybe fifty six. Um. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you arrive, exactly. Very good. Uh, oh, it's E string. <laughs> Every time, yeah. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> okay, let's start 61 and with this wonderful connection to the theme. <laughs> yep. Now, which way is it? Okay, good. I need a little bit of more more emotion here in. Uh, um, no, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's very special big moment. So give me a bit more sound and more uh, more intensive. Um, uh, you know, you have to feel every interval, every chord, and we have a lot of those um, uh, dissonance here. Let's start once more this variation for... Yeah, and a bit of time. Wonderful, and then a bit of time. You can really breathe and then um, yeah, then yep. continue. Try once more. Start once more from from the same place. Yeah.
very nice. Um, here, I know you, you were doing contrast, yeah? Forte and then piano in the... I tried to, yeah. You did. I know, I mean, we are online, so it's not the same sound, but you have to make it maybe more clear, yeah? And yeah. I know it's very, very challenging here for the fourth finger, which for us is always weak, yeah? But mm -hmm. uh, you have to find a way to strengthen it. It's, that's the good place, wonderful place to practice it. Also, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you followed this, uh, the actually Facebook page of Riga Jurmala um, Academy. If you saw the video of my colleague, Tobias Steinmanns, and he's actually showing very good uh, exercise for strengthening the fourth, uh, the little finger. So mm. check it out at home when you are when yeah, you are back at okay. home, and you can you can just start with this exercise. I actually didn't know this exercise before, but I think it's very good. So uh, try it, and then you will see here. Also, I mean, you have to also practice Bach. So in yeah. Bach, you can also try to strengthen it. And uh, I think also it's a little bit also in your mind because with the trill in in Lu, yeah, when you started the trill with from with fourth finger from the top, it yeah. worked uh, just well. So I don't think it's uh, it's such a big problem. Don't think too much about it. Let's try and just play it as <laughs> yeah, it to, yeah. if it would be third. Just play as if it would be normal second or third finger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or just don't think that it's a, a weak one. <coughs> okay. Okay. Let's start once more from the top of the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit more more movement. I like this uh, this place. You know, I have the feeling in a piano where you, when you make an echo, um, your bow is just not uh, stable yet. To you know, to you have to balance it better to play piano on both strings. Yeah, so we can hear both uh, voices. But fourth finger was just fine. So maybe maybe it's just a little uh, thing that it's in your mind that is blocking you, yeah, and yeah, I, you I know, you're believing right. that it's uh, it's not good enough. Just think that the opposite. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's good <laughs> enough. It's strong. It's the strongest finger we we use. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's start from yeah the last time. I promise. Yep. <laughs> this place. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I would uh, before bef before you are a little bit steady with. Uh, it's good because with all this chromatic, it's it should be a little bit tensed, yeah, a little bit stretched. Uh. But then I would just go for it, like when you go towards the top, just a little bit more uh, agogic, yeah. A bit more flexible. Yep. Um, maybe from. Um, Yeah, great. I also would suggest also for this movement, uh, try every now and then to play without vibrato, yeah? Especially the theme, because it's so simple, such a simple music and very, 
uh, you know, very down to earth and um, it can be really just um, the natural sound of violin. Yeah? <laughs> a lot of open strings and and this E major uh, tonation that actually rings a lot yeah uh, that it's mm. like a lot of overtones because we have open E string and op open A and um, I like this this key the, the e, e major um, and when you really want to create a little bit different mood yeah and you need different different character then also it's it's allowed but um, not not as a first um, thing that you use to to make the music okay yeah just try for the last time uh, last uh, theme that comes after the yeah after uh, without vibrato this time <laughs> yep Very nice. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. So I, I think I think it's a lot of information for you today, and I I, yeah. I really enjoyed working on it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hope too. you can. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> and then uh, I hope we can work on something else maybe next year. I don't know in Riga if we finally can come there. And uh, yeah, do you play actually the other movements of the partita by now? I play the prelude. Mm -hmm. But nothing else, no. Ah, only prelude and then, okay. I, you know, it's very interesting to play the whole thing just for yourself now in the quarantine time, if you have uh, mm -hmm. time. And I play uh, the minuettos in in my free time now nowadays. Exactly, because not, it's not it's a lovely music, and actually, um, when you play all the I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movements, yeah. When you play all the seven movements, you start seeing a big picture how big this uh, this piece is actually and we just play so, um, small parts of it yeah small movements but uh, it's good if you know the whole piece and then you you have a little bit different view on uh, on for example on such on such a movement on gavotte um as a as a part of the cycle the bigger cycle so maybe do that and also i encourage you to uh, check on youtube uh, how lure uh, dance looks like it's you will be yeah, really I'll make surprised sure you check it out. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much for this uh, nice uh, hour and thank you. Uh, thank you. stay strong and uh, stay motivated and I hope to hear you at some point uh, live. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Take care and uh, goodbye. Thank you.